Hello, I am Ashriya Podil and I am a 16-year-old residing in Kathmandu. Currently, I am doing my A-levels from St. Xavier's College. Following the topic, today I am here to share my opinions on this subject, space and sustainability. What we understand by sustainability is something that lasts. Humans disrupting the natural sustainability of the Earth led the United Nations to form 17 Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. They were set up for the prosperity of not only the present, but the future as well. There is a big debate in the world on whether space technology is helping humans achieve those goals, or rather, preventing them. I support the former and taking these Sustainable Development Goals in account, feel privileged to explain to you why. Firstly, let's start with Goals 1 and 2, No Poverty and Zero Hunger. So, two of the major parts about space are the Global Navigation System and the Earth Observation Data. They can be used to monitor the land, soil, temperature, humidity, and other aspects of a particular place and then determine what crop production is best for that place. It is proven that the use of these systems can increase the crop production by 10%. Also, Earth observation satellites can be used to observe and predict many natural disasters in various parts of the world. For instance, the Soil Moisture Active Passive is a satellite program that is capable of predicting flood in Southeast Africa one to three days beforehand. This has saved the lives of many Africans and prevented them from facing food crisis and loss of life and property. Similarly, space has and is continuing to help achieve sustainable development goal number three, good health and well-being. Let's go back to the 1960s when NASA attempted to grow plants in an artificial environment. An ethylene buildup could be witnessed there. In the process of trying to fix this, air purifiers were invented. Nowadays, air purifiers are a big part of human life and they are helping many asthma patients as well as people in general in getting clean fresh air. Also, with the attempt of keeping people safe, air quality and spread of diseases can be monitored by using remote sensing on Earth. This allows researchers to identify vulnerable areas that need to be taken better care of. Now, I would like to shift to goal number 14 and 15, life below water and life on land. Space technology is equally beneficial for the protection of both life below water and life on land. Forest fires, which take away the lives of many animals, are being pinpointed by shortwave infrared images using space technology. This has allowed us to re rescue animals in time. Similarly, a project named the WAMCAM project is being conducted. WAMCAM project is an AI-based satellite project which monitors endangered species. Whenever a trap is triggered by an animal, a, a signal is sent to the researchers via satellites. Then they come to the forest to study the animal. This has increased the efficiency of their work. Now, switching to life on water, the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite 16 is a satellite that has been monitoring ocean color, ocean temperature, and migration of whales. It has become a vital tool to understand life on water. We can clearly see how beneficial space has been to us and our mission of achieving sustainable development goals. By using space to understand our ever-changing planet, we can work together to make the Earth a better place and promote sustainable development goals all over the world. This gives us hope that the next generation of technology and innovation will not be based on thoughtlessness, but will be a systematic bridge between humanity and sustainability. Thank you very much.